Yes, yes. That that yeah. whole experience of your eyes being open. You know. Now, see, I thought that I was learning. Well, I was. I was learning the truth. It was a. It was like you said. It was a path. It was. It took some time, but um, I was. I was coming to the realization. You know that that these spirits were. Um, for the most part, demonic. You know, I thought that, you know, if not all of them, you know, most of them, you know, I just, I still was like a little bit, you know, mm. but it was, my eyes were being opened uh, one time. And it was really weird, really weird um, about the time. Okay. Well, I'll go back a few seconds here, a little, a little bit of time here, but my grandson, he was like four mm -hmm. And um, we were in the living room and he was in my room on, on my bed watching TV. And I was in there and something told me to just kind of peek in and check on him, you know? So I, I come around the corner and I looked at him and I went to say something to him and he was like looking at the ground, you know, down at the foot of the bed, like, like, you know, like he had seen a ghost. I mean, really, that's the way he yeah, looked. Yeah. And I'm like, what's the matter? What is it? What's the matter? I'm looking at the TV on what's going on, you know? And he was like, I don't know. And he said it was a monster or something. Mm. And he looked so confused. And I said, I don't see no monster. I said, there ain't no such thing as no monster. And I said, there's no monster in here. And he sa I said, where's the monster? He jumped off the bed and he looked at the floor and he started rubbing his hand on the floor. And he said, I don't know. He said, it went in the floor or something. I mean, he was so wow. confused and I knew that the, that, you know, that whatever it was that was the tormenting mm. us now it was appearing to him mm. and I'll show yeah. you a picture. I'll show you a picture. Ooh. He, he, a couple years ago, I asked my son, I said, I said, do you remember? Cause we were talking about it and he's 13 now. Mm. And he told me, I said, do you remember that? He said, yes. Oh. And I said, do you remember what it looked like? You know, cause I was just curious cause he's seen it yeah. with us. We didn't see it. It would just come in and we would feel it. We would feel it, you know, or, or it would be like really dark. Like I was saying, well, this is what he said it looked like. I hope you could see this. Wow. Now, what does that look now, like? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, you know, that looks like an alien. Yes. You know, really? And mm -hmm. I'll, you know, that, that got me, you know, and he still to this day remembers that he never forgot it, never forgot it. But after that happened, okay. A couple nights later, I was a guest on a radio show and it was called paranormal USA. I think it was, well, what it was, was we, I can't remember if we were going, I was going on there because I, I was, I used to speak at, at paranormal conventions and it, it was about that, that um, case because I had the video, video footage of it where the guy uh -huh. was thrown. Yeah. And so I would go and I would show the, the video and everything. And I would talk about ghost hunting safety, which we know there's no safety in it. Um, but I, and I would teach spirit communications and I sold dowels and rods and I would show people how to use them and stuff. And advocating for the devil. <laughs> but anyway, um, so after this happened, um, we, okay, I was on the radio show. And it was, we were going to talk about, um, I think it was, I can't remember if it was, I was thinking it was before the, um, the, uh, the convention, but it must have been after because this was in February. That's mm -hmm. when I got my deliverance and, you know, everything stopped. And it was right before that, like a week before that. Wow. And um, because right after that happened with my, my grandson, I said, that's it. We have to get help in the following week. We got help. So it was between, it was in that week. Mm -hmm. And so I had that radio interview and I wanted to tell the people I was going to tell, mention, you know, what I was thinking, you know, that it, I was starting to believe that it was all demonic and the strangest things happened. I went on the radio show and we were starting to talk about the, the convention and everything. And next thing I know, as I started to tell them, you know, what I was starting to believe, yeah, we were getting so many uh, disturbances on the, on the phone, you know, on the, on the call and stuff.
and it was so apparent to me and it was getting more and more apparent yes. I, so i was like okay i'll go outside and get maybe the phone signal will be better outside so i went outside in the back well i had dogs and they knew me you know i went out there and everything well they I, they were fine and we we would start to talk again and next thing you know as soon as i started to mention it again the dogs oh man it was creepy but yeah. the dogs looked up, looked up there and they started to bark in such a way they started to howl. And I was like, it was just like something took over them. I mean, that really, it's what it seemed like. And I mean, it just got all over me. And then finally, we had to uh, postpone the call. We had to just, you know, put it off and I was going to come back on and all that. And uh, that was another you know, I have, and, and I was like, mm -mm, and something didn't want me to tell them. You exactly. Know? That's it. Oh, That's it. it was weird. It was so weird. It was I, just things like that, you know? Yeah. I've been trying to, I have a person, a friend of mine who had a very crazy demonic experience um, with the entities yeah. literally right next to his face. Um, oh, and oh. he, he was up, a, a tree like a deer hunting you go up a tree and you sort of oh wow what do you a deer hide i think yes, they call it yes um and these entities came in the dark and were present right in front of his face and i said to him i'd love to share your story because it taught him to come to jesus and he came to yes. jesus and now he's actually an advocate for Jesus, teaching people, be careful what you do because you attract yes. the, these demonic spirits. Now, this, this yes. demonic thing was either like a Bigfoot or a dogman or, or that type of a, a creature, something. He, yeah. he couldn't see. It was pitch black and it was right in front of him. He felt the breath oh, on his face oh, wow. and the saliva on his skin because it, it was sitting on him. Oh, man. Oh, man. And I said to him, uh -uh. I'd like to share your story because a lot of people um, go looking for Bigfoot and stuff like that. Yes, and yes. That is something, yeah. I, I did, did you do that, that. I did that too. I thought and, I heard you say that. And wow, it's all demonic, but anyway, it's spiritual. They yeah. don't believe it. They think it's a real, you well, know, it's, entity yeah. or whatever. And it yeah. is. It's a, it's a creature. I meant. And I, I. Oh, anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> that so, is um, he said to me, "We we teed up the first interview, and his computer crashed and broke." Yep, that happened to me. That happened to me too. So a month later, he got a new computer, brand new computer. We teed up the interview. Once again, it just broke. A brand new computer. And yep. he said, I don't know what's happening. And I said, I know what's happening. I've seen this before. Yes. Yep. Um, so I don't know if I'll ever get this interview, but I'm, I am... I'm going to get that story that sad, one though. way or another because it's, yes. it's super have, scary. Do you have, is there a way that you can talk to, can you get a hold of him? I mean, I wonder if there's a way you can maybe contact him, maybe just do it again. Actually, we could just talk to him. Well, maybe, I, th know? I think he's a little bit, um, it's costing him a lot of money with these computers and, and he's. Bless his heart. So, but yeah, these yes. things happen and. Yeah. Many people He's such a, who he, are listening will agree. <laughs> yes, yes. We had, um, I think the only time that I felt anything, you know, that was like close to that was um, me and my husband was in bed one night and we had a big, uh, you know, a bed where I was turned one side, you know, facing outside. He was facing the outside. Yeah. And like I said, my, my younger grandson was living with us. And uh, so we were just laying there one night wide awake. And it was dark, you know, and next thing you know, we felt him jump up on the bed and like he come up between us and he was like scooting between us, you know. And so I reached back there, you know, to, to, to rub on him and say, hey, you know, and I reached back there and I didn't feel nothing. And I turned around and there was nobody there. And my husband said, what? And I mean, he jumped around because he realized 
he thought it was him too. And when I jumped up and I said, whoa, what is that? What, what's that, you know? And he jumped up. I mean, we, we, started, that's, we started rebuking in the name of Jesus again, <laughs> you know, but it was just, yeah. and I mean, you know, it's something what these things, I mean, they, they start really tormenting, mm -hmm. you know, about the time that you start figuring it out. And you know what I was wondering? Mm -hmm. You know how in the Bible where it says when you start now, of course, it's talking about deliverance where it says you cast spirits out of a man and they come back worse, you know, if, they, right. if the person's not filled with the Holy Spirit. times well, greater it makes me wonder about these people that are not true christians they're not believers and they say leave in the name of jesus it does leave but it comes back and it seems like every time it comes back it's with a vengeance yes and i'm wondering if that's yeah. why because they're not filled with the holy spirit and they're casting these demons out of their home and it's coming back well see they're the reason it's there yeah. you know the, like the with me i was in the occult and it was bringing it in you know so, yeah. and the state of the man will be worse than it was before right. or something and sure enough this is what happens mm. you know i really believe that i believe mm. there's something to that even though you're not really like casting it out of the person you're casting it out of the home and the person has an open door they just don't realize it you know yeah. and that spirit comes right back and it comes back worse and worse every time, you know, one time my husband, when he, that was when he was sexually attacked, uh, we got, he was yelling, get out in the name of Jesus. And I didn't know what happened. I just jumped up and I started yelling the same thing because I knew something happened. Mm -hmm. And after it all was said and done, we realized he had a bite mark in his growing area. Ooh. And when that happened, um, he, he was, what it was, was he had rosary beads next to him. And we had rosary beads hung up all over the house. I mean, I didn't know what to do. Like, nothing was working. You know, sage, salt, you know, oil, uh, oil, you know, anointing oil. We got holy water. Nothing was working. So he grabbed, one time he grabbed the rosary bead. He was like saying, in the name of Jesus, get out of here. The rosary beads just broke. Bam. I mean, the beads went everywhere. It was just it, you know, these things, I tell you what, and I had a couple necklaces that had Jesus on, on the necklace, on the cross, which I don't really like to wear, you know, with Jesus off the cross, you know, it's not really the good thing to do. But anyway, back then I did. And literally the Jesus would, I, I would find the Jesus like in the bathroom floor and it would be like the arm was tore off of it and stuff in my necklace. And I'm like, I didn't even know it would come off my charm, but it was just like, it was a religious symbol and it was like it did something you know it just did something to it it was just it didn't like it you know but sorry for aging. <laughs> i just had a lozenge um wow oh, that's sorry. that's really interesting um yeah. yeah it it just goes to show that we really need to make a huge change not just a, a partial change yes. because the demons can come back and I think there's a lot yeah. of ministers when they do deliverance. Um, that's one of the reasons they don't do it for everyone because if they, can't, right. if they can't see that that person is going to make a complete change, then yes, they amen. could be bringing more destruction to that person. Um, yes. And that oh. person really has to be dedicated to Jesus through and through. Um, yep. And and sometimes they can seem very, very, um, like they're going to change, you know, sometimes I think that they, they do want, I think they're desperate to get out of the situation from the torment, but they don't want to make that change. They don't want to, you know, turn their life over to Jesus. That's right. Fully. Mm, had that happen. And people actually went through a lot more since they yeah. didn't do that and they got deliverance. It was, you know, it's really hard for people to um, realize that they need to lose their sin. And unfortunately, some people yes. love their sin greater than they love the Lord. Amen. Um, yep. Well, what happened after that, if you want me to go on where, when I got the deliverance, what happened um, that 
actually was like the big eye opener. Please you know, tell me I, about I, the I, deliverance. I, I, I'm, I yeah, really want to like, hear it. Uh, well, what it was, was I, I was thinking that it was my husband that needed deliverance. <sighs> it's strange enough. I, I really did because he was the one that it seemed like that these spirits were targeting. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, with my investigations, I thought, well, maybe I had, maybe it was a spirit that attached to me <laughs> from an investigation and that actually, you know, attached to my husband. Right. So after the incident with my grandson, when he seen this spirit and everything, that's when I was like, that was my desperate point. And I was like, that was it. That was it. I said, look, we've got to go do something and we're going to go do it next week. As soon as I, we just need to go to a church and try, you know, we need to ask and see if they can pray with us and give you deliverance. That's what I was thinking, you know, about my right. husband. So, so we went to a local church at next week. And so after the service and everything, I took my husband down. <laughs> the aisle. I mean, it's not funny, but you know, I'm thinking it's him, you know? Yeah. So I'm like taking my husband down there, you know, and I'm, I'm <laughs> explaining to the, uh, to the minister. I said, you know, I said, look, I said, I think that at an investigation, I may have a, a, a spirit may have attached to me. And it may have attached to my husband now because, you know, and I told him what was going on. Mm -hmm. And he said, wait a minute. He says, what did you say you're doing? And I said, well, I'm a, I'm a paranormal investigator. And I said, and I, and I started explaining it again. And he says, honey, you're going to have to stop doing what you're doing. He said, that's probably what's doing all this. And I said, what? <laughs> I mean, I never, never believed, yeah. never even thought that it had to do with what I was doing. I mm. thought that it was just, some a spirit I picked up that was a bad spirit you know and um so he said yeah he says uh that's the occult you know and I said oh okay and I'm thinking about it I'm like oh wow I mean it just it was hitting me though that what he was saying was true yeah. I wasn't thinking I wasn't like uh, saying oh that's not true I wasn't being defensive at all I was like thinking oh okay wow maybe it is true it well, was just like hitting me. Yeah. You know? well, a similar thing happened to me. Um, I remember really? reading something about new age and I thought, what's this new age people are talking about and everything. Yeah. When I read about it, I thought, well, that's what I'm doing. And I thought, oh, I never, <laughs> never knew I was in new age. And yes. Yes. I always, when people spoke about a cult, yeah. I just thought that was really dark demonic things. Like Me I too. thought that was I thought that was um That's so true. Okay, I thought it was witchcraft and it is. Yeah. yeah. I didn't think I was doing witchcraft. I thought witchcraft right. <laughs> see, I had a different perception of what that is. So yes. my perception yes. of witchcraft was someone who was doing really bad spells to hurt <laughs> people, too. to harm people like voodoo. And, and yes, I thought yes. occult was all the satanic, really dark satanic, you know, sick and yeah. stuff. But uh, uh, it's all of that. <laughs> Even if people say it's, it's a white witch or a, or a, a light worker, it's all of that. Yes, and this yes, is what shocked me. And when I found yeah. out, I thought, oh, that's me. And I felt terrible. <laughs> so sorry to interrupt you. Please go ahead. With oh, no, that's okay. That's okay. That's it's so true though what you're saying, because I mean, like, even when we would do ghost hunts and stuff and we would be in a building and it was like a lot of activity happening, we would, we would think, man, maybe this is because people used to come down here and do some kind of big seances and stuff and, and you know it brought it in here <laughs> and what and while we're there we're doing evp mm. sessions not realizing that is a seance we're yes. communicating with the spirit that's an no open matter door. if we're sitting at a table or not <laughs> yeah. that's a seance you know yeah. and uh it just they don't and i even like if you were to see like the ghost adventures or the these shows that i mean they're on every channel here you know right. these ghost hunting shows it's so popular and they really say that people believe more in ghosts than they do in God anymore, you know, and I believe that I believe that, you know, but, um, but yeah, it's really sad. But anyway, um, so I took my husband down there and he's, 
and the, he's telling me that you know that, that I see a cult and what I'm doing is you know could be bringing this on so I'm right. like wow oh, okay you know so but I'm still focused on my husband over here you know <laughs> so I'm telling you about my husband and all this stuff that's happening to him and you know and all this and everything and so we noticed that my husband had on a rosary bead necklace and he says can you tell me why you have that on and so we both started to explain that it was for safety, you know, that it was just something for protection. And I said, uh, we have them all over our house. I have Bibles open in every room. And when mm -hmm. I say every room, I mean the laundry room, the bathroom, the closets, every yeah. room. Can I just I mean, we were desperate. Nina, yeah, yeah. Right. At that time when you said you had Bibles open in every room, <laughs> did you ever read yeah. one? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Nope. It was just, I, and, and that's really weird because, yeah, you know, the Bible itself, it has no power. Okay. Right. And it, I know people's going to not like that statement, but it's when you open the Bible and you apply it to your life that brings power, you know, that gives you that power in Jesus, you know, and you learn it from it and everything. But if it's just sitting there dusty on a, on a shelf, no one's reading it. It That's has no it. power. There's no, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You can have yes. it in there. You can be a Satanist and do rituals and everything else in that room. That Bible is not going to help anything, That's you know, right. unless you read it and apply yeah. it, you know, to, to your life and, and everything. But, um, so, so anyway, so he told my husband, he said, would you take that necklace off? So he says, okay. And I was confused. And I was like, this is a church. Why would he not want him to have a cross on, you know? And I asked him, I says, if you don't mind, I said, why did you have him take that off? And he says, well, you have to know. He says, when you take your faith and you put it in an object, you're taking your faith off Jesus. It's Jesus and him alone that's mm. going to bring you freedom. Praise and when God. he said that, I was like, I, I, I mean, it hit me like a ton so, of bricks. Yeah. You got I was it. like, no wonder all these things wasn't working. You know, the salt, the sage, the candles, the <laughs> everything we were doing wasn't yeah. working. And that's yeah. because I wasn't having faith in Jesus, you know? Mm. And um, that was, that was probably, that was the most valuable thing I learned, you know, with all of that, you know, yeah. uh, besides, you know, that I should leave the occult, but, <laughs> but anyway, so um, after this, that happened, he started to pray for us. And I'm thinking, I'm still focused on my husband over here, you know? <laughs> so he said, and he's praying for us. And when he did, all of a sudden I had this weird feeling. I mean, it was beyond weird. It was like a panic attack come over me. Right. And I couldn't understand why am I feeling this way? I, I want to be here. Why am I feeling like I need to get out of this church? I wanted to run. I mean, it was mm. just... It was so strong that it took everything I had not to do it, you know, and I was like fighting with myself, it felt like, you know, and did you, uh, did you have people around you? Did they like obviously you started you know, to manifest? I don't even know. Did people come around I don't you even at that? Know. Okay. I don't know. I mean, it was yeah. a lot of people there, you know, and they were all like standing around talking because it was the end of church and everything. Mm. And we were just talking to him and and uh so after that happened and I'm sitting there and I'm wondering why am I feeling this way? You know, I want to be here, you know? Mm. And all of a sudden I, I felt this, I mean, it was just, I felt like my eyes were rolling back in my, I mean, seriously, yeah. it was just the weirdest feeling. So when that happened, I was thinking about what that preacher just told me about having my faith in Jesus alone. And I thought, started to pray along with him and I was saying in the name of Jesus you got to go in the name of Jesus you got to go now he was praying for us you know and and then I started doing it myself and all of a sudden literally I felt that feeling just break it just stopped yeah it was truly my deliverance I know that that's when it happened you know that spirit left me and wow. I believe it was a familiar spirit because, you know, you're talking to these spirits about, you know, the familiars, you know, like you think you're talking to the spirit of someone's dead loved one and, you know, and all this. And, and, you know, the verses say something about those that 
not those that consult familiar spirits, but those that have familiar spirits. Mm-hmm. You know, so that told me right there in the Bible too that, you know, the people that do that they have familiar spirits. You know, right. yeah. but um, but so that was it. They, it broke, and do you know? I had a lot, I had a whole room in my house that was dedicated to my ghost hunt and stuff. I had my big banner that I used at the conventions and I had all my equipment. I had all these dowels and rods. I had yes. all this stuff. I had and I'm stuff like, cause I had my own team, you know, yes. I don't even know if I mentioned that, but I had my own team and, and I had them for quite a bit of years and we would like go to homes and we thought we was helping people. We weren't helping them. Yeah. We were just bringing the occult activities in their home. Uh, I just, I just want to talk a little bit about that because, um, yeah, when I was in a cult, I had people who were doing house clearings who were mediums. And, um, when I was under, uh, immense spiritual attack, I had my friend come over and um, she did this house clearing and it seemed better for a day or two and it actually made it worse. And the Bible tells mm. us in Mark 3.25, if a house is divided against itself, it cannot stand. So you can't yes. fight Satan with Satan. You're right. You're so You can right. only, only fight Satan with Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's right. You're right about yeah. that. And, you know, we thought when, um, you know, when we thought we was helping these people, that's another thing. I not only thought I was helping people, I thought I was helping spirits because Mm. we were leading them to the light. Yes. 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 That post-mortem salvation. (laughs) And it was like, so we thought that we were, and do you know, when you think about it, Mm. we are putting ourselves in Jesus position. We're the mediator then. We yes. think we are, you right. know, when we're saying, um, you know, we're talking to the spirit, telling them they can go to the light. They're okay. They can, you know, and all, that's not for us to decide, you know, and, and of course it's not that spirit anyway, you know, mm-hmm. but it's just, it's just an odd, an odd thing, you know, that we could actually thought we could do that, you know, but it was so real. It was so yes. real, you know, mm-hmm. because we were getting EVPs and we were getting, Oh man, one time we were at a table tipping and, um, uh, at, where was that at Putnam hotel? It was in Del- Deland, Florida. And oddly enough, just to bring this up the year I got my deliverance, 2011, that motel closed down. Wow. It was just, it's a ruin now. And yeah. it, I went and I, I did a, um, video. It was about dear Laura, um, Max, Maxwell's. It was a, uh, an article she wrote for a newspaper and I went there and what I did was at the spiritualist camp, I went on site and I started, I did videos about, you know, uh, her, her, uh, her testimony that was in this article and it was all this. So while I was there, I went and stopped there and I was like, it was just, it was just weird. You know, I was like, wow, I just, it was like a whole different lifetime. You know, it was just different. Mm. I wasn't that person I was, I was before, you know, I'm no, I'm no longer that person. It's yeah. just, it's, isn't it weird? I mean, it's not yes. weird in ba- a bad way. It was just, it's so different, you know, yes. it's just, yeah, it really is. It really is. You know? Everything is changed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Completely. Definitely. <laughs> um, wow. So Dana, how long was your transition? Because I know mine was like, gosh, it could have been over a year. Because it was slowly, yeah. um, it was yeah. a slow transition, but it was a complete transition. So how yes. long was the transition? It took a little bit of time. Um, I know of at least, at least, at least five months because mm. I was also um, abusing prescription drugs. Okay. And that was another problem that I had, you know, and I needed freedom from that. And as a matter of fact, when that preacher prayed with us, he asked us about that. He asked us if we had any kind of addictions, uh, you know, or anything else, because he, he wanted to know how to pray. You know, I'm, I'm now looking back now. I know that's what he was doing, you know, right. but I denied it. I didn't, I didn't admit it, you know, so I kind of held on to that. I was scared, you know, when, when you have these addictions, it's, it's scary, to know that when you get off of them, that you're going to be sick, 
and it, it's powerful, you know. Yes. I mean, nowadays, it's really bad, you know, the uh, pharmacia, mm. you know, but it's really bad around here. There's so many overdoses all the time. Gosh. But when I, when I, um, after that happened, I couldn't get rid of my stuff fast enough. I destroyed the stuff. I got rid of, like, my cameras and stuff, I sold it, but I got rid of all of my stuff. Mm. And then... I'm uh, guessing but, you but had thing, books. It wasn't and... immediate. It took, yes, I burned stuff. Oh, yes. I even got a video of the last bit of stuff because we started having a couple other little things happen. Like my mom, my daughter was in a room and I was in my room and we both heard the other one yell our name. You know what I mean? Like I heard her call my name and she heard me call her name. Oh, and gosh. it was very real. It wasn't uh, just like I thought I might have heard it. I heard it. And when that happened, I was like, Oh, I know what's going on here. You know? So we prayed about it. And I thought, and I was talking to my brother and he was like, Dana, maybe you have something still in your house, you know? Cause, and I knew that that, that does happen. You know, it can, ha it can, it can be an invitation or an open door for something to stay there. So I started yeah. looking around. I had a Freemason book. I had demo demonology books that were not biblical. Right. And I had, uh, I forgot what, it was a lot of different little things. It was just enough for like a big pot, you know, to put the stuff in. And, uh, oh, I had video footages of a lot of investigations I kept. And I got rid of those. And um, as a matter of fact, I even had some of the investigators that was actually uh, with me on some of those investigations that wrote me. And they were like, oh, was that the... <laughs> Because I did it on Facebook. I showed everybody what I was doing. Right. And they said, uh, they were like, was that that video footage that you got at blah, blah, blah? You know, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I mean, they were getting mad because I got rid of it. And I was like, oh, man. And it kept returning, actually. Yeah. And I went out there the next day. This is no lie. I, and I even have it on Facebook. It was like a couple of days later, I did another burning. And that was because when I put that stuff in that fire, or in the pot to, to burn. The very first things I put in was the video footages. And that was the first thing. Yeah. Then I put books and stuff in there. Well, I burned it. The next day or two, I walked out there to, just to empty the pot, just to look at it, you know. And I go out there, there's that footage sitting right next <gasps> to it, untouched, unburned, untouched. Mm. And I'm like, what? I mean, it freaked me out. It did. I was like, what in the world? So I said, uh-uh, guys, we need everybody, prayer warriors, let's pray. I'm going to burn this thing. I don't care. If the devil don't want me to do it. Yeah. I'm doing it. Mm. So we got on there, and everybody prayed and everything, and I burned it. Everything went okay, you know. Now, years later, I did, uh, because back when I had the footage, I actually had made copies of it, you know, but I didn't know where the copies were, you know. I just didn't. Yes. So I found some on dvds well i did another burning <laughs> well then uh it was like maybe like four years ago something like that i found one of my old ipods and it was it was one of the real like ipod 4 or something it was yeah. one of the real old ones yeah and it wouldn't work i remembered it didn't work because whenever i plug it in it just wouldn't charge so I, some told me, you know, just try it, you know, just see, you know, because I always get curious of what kind of pictures did I leave on it, you know, like back when I had it and all this. So I went ahead and I plugged it in and I was cleaning the house and everything. Later on, I went through there and I noticed it was charged. And I was like, whoa, I got to see what's on this thing. So I'm just going through my old pictures and I'm like, wow, I come across the footage again on the video. And I was like, I was like, oh my gosh. But you know, I know this sounds terrible, but really, you know, when people see what the demonic can do, they mm -hmm. don't believe it. Mm -hmm. They do not believe what the demonic can do. And I have shown that footage to pe like people like teenagers mm -hmm. that want to play around and go ghost hunting out. And what, you know, and I told them, I said, I told them these things can really do some serious damage they can hurt oh you. yes they can. so i showed them the video footage of that guy getting thrown and they were like whoa it really 
it can open eyes. I've learned that. And I, and then I'm looking back and I'm like, I wonder if it was actually meant for me to keep it, to show people, you know, Hey, this stuff's dangerous. You know, you can't Could do be. that. Could be. You know, I just don't know. So what I end up doing, I just uploaded it on YouTube on private and um, I just left it there just in case, you know? So I don't know. I don't know. I just, I'm thinking about it. I prayed about I have prayed so much about that. <laughs> you have no idea. Yeah. And then it keeps popping up. And I'm like, you know, what is this? Does God want me to show people, hey, look, this stuff can really happen. It's dangerous. You know, it's just like us telling people, hey, this stuff's dangerous, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. But, yeah. I, um, yeah. when I got rid of all my things, books and, and, um, you know, I just had books on Reiki and um, different things, hypnotherapy wow. and all that type of yeah. thing. And I burnt, burnt them and I, I had some, you know, you see some sort of flags in there. Uh, a lot of new ages have these flags and they've got spiritual symbols on them. I burnt all that. Yes. And oh, it, wow. it, was, it was like a, a mini bonfire and I just, I burnt them. And I said a prayer oh, wow. and I repented. I asked forgiveness and I felt, it was like I felt as this was burning, I felt, I felt it was, I was becoming clean. Um, yes. And, yep, yep. and once it was done, uh, I looked at the bottom and there was still book pages that weren't properly burnt. So the next day I burnt them again. <laughs> I wanted, yeah. I wanted nothing left. And, um, yes. well, but you know, you know after, universe, sorry, after the, there was still yeah. things in my garage or something, you know, as I was cleaning it out one day, I thought, Oh, that has to go. That has to go. Just things that you, you forget they're there or something. So yes. sometimes yep. you need to do two or three house yes. cleansers to get rid of everything. Amen. Um, That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Yeah. I've done that. And I, I continually actually like things that pop up and it's like, uh, I don't know that that, yeah. that probably isn't right to have, you know, or just and pray about it. And it's just, mm. you just get rid of it. It's better to get rid of it and be safe really, you know? Yeah. Um, and that feeling of that, that weight being lifted. And, you know, I was just trying to remember the Bible verse, but there's a Bible verse. I think it's in second Kings. And it was talking about, gosh, who was it? I'm sorry. I can't think of it. I wish I had it on me. But it was where he said that he burned the images. He burned all the images and stuff. And there was not a king. God said that it was not another king like him or something because he did this. Mm. And I mean, I, I can't remember who it was. I was terrible. I can't remember it. But I mean, I actually did a video on that a long time ago when I you know, destroyed all that stuff. It was like, I did that video showing it and I talked about it, but yeah, you know, it does please God when we do that, you know, it really does. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's really true repentance to get rid of all it that is, stuff. It is. Yes, and I, it is. I had probably, gosh, I could have had 40, maybe 50 books on different topics and yeah, you know, and, and the, all these things cost a lot of money and, I thought I could take it to the op shop and I thought, no, because I don't want somebody yeah. else to buy this. We need it off yep. the shelf. We need to get rid of it. We need to burn yes. it. So yeah. Because um, you don't want no one else to be deceived by it. You absolutely know? That's what not. I thought too with the yeah. other books and demonic, uh, what do you call it? Demonology books and stuff. I actually had a couple of Christians come after me about that and said, well, those aren't really, um, those are those are biblical you know and they were saying stuff about it, and i was like no those ain't those aren't biblical you know the god yeah. doesn't talk about those demons that's in that book you know and it's talking about folklore it wasn't talking about biblical you know demons yes. or anything it yeah. was it wasn't right it just i felt like it wasn't right you know and i knew of the woman that actually wrote the book and i used to look up to her you know years ago mm. that was when i was an investigator but and that was another thing that was like, ah, she wrote that. Her name was, um, 
her last name was Gills. I can't remember her first name, but um, she was a real nice lady, but she was an investigator. She was on TV on all the shows and stuff like that. But, but you know, hey, it wasn't right. You no. know, so I just destroyed it. Well and everything. done. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah. It's something how this stuff can go down. It's family line, you know, yes. like generational, mm -hmm. really. You know, and I think the generational thing too is a lot to do with influence, don't you? Like, learn behaviors. Like, say for instance, a a fam a a child that their father was an alcoholic, mm -hmm. and then they end up getting into you know drinking. Right. And yeah. I don't know. I just sometimes I think that that's got a lot to do with the generational thing too. You know, but uh, I don't know. It's just it's something else though. I tell you. Um, yeah, yeah gosh that that's um that's tragic what what's happened and whenever yeah. i think of um you know people suiciding or something like that i do think um because you know these demonic spirits talk to you they they influence your mind you know people yes. can hear voices and the voices will say you know you're not good enough you're never going to be anything yeah. you should just kill yourself it's happened before yes. people have said this yes um yes. like they push them over the edge right and you know. because they yes. have no solid grounding in in uh christianity or the bible or knowing jesus they've got nothing to hold on to yeah. and and i know, feel so bad because i I was in the paranormal when those, when the Constantinos were in there and I come out and learn the truth, mm. but they didn't get to, you know, and I feel so bad about that, you know, and it's like, that's why I want to reach people yeah. that, that are into it and, you know, maybe get them help and let them tell the truth about Jesus and, you know, that he can save us out of this and he could, he could save us period. Mm -hmm. It's not just to get out of that, but, you know, just to, to learn how he does love us. You know, he, he died for us. And even if it was just us here on the earth, he would have died for just us. You know what I mean? It wasn't, yeah. you know what I mean? He loved us yeah. really, he, you know, he, he still really does. does. How has um, having Jesus in your life changed everything for you? Do you have, you know, those uh, little miracles that, that, bless you and tell us about yes, some yes. of those i've seen people healed i have seen people healed i have seen people my uh my grandson's mother she had uh seizures major seizures you know i mean to the point that when she was pregnant with him the oxygen would get cut off because the seizures she would last so long they had to put her in the hospital and induce the labor like six weeks early um, just because the baby wasn't getting enough oxygen because she was having these seizures so often. I mean, it was like several times a day. And um, so after she had him and thank God he, you know, he was okay and everything. Mm -hmm. um, after that, she still continued to have her seizures. Well, we went to church one Sunday and uh, it was a revival at our church. And she went up, she asked me, she says, I want to go up there. And I said, okay, I'll take you. We'll walk up there. So we went up to the altar call. And so the guy, he looks at her, the preacher, he didn't know her from Adam. And I know we did. And that's the good thing. I knew it wasn't a put on because I was there. Yeah. <laughs> he looked at her and he said, God says to tell you that after today, you're not going to have another seizure. He put his hand on her head. Amen. She dropped to the ground and started seizing really bad. And I mean, she started the foaming at the mouth, the eyes. I mean, it just was crazy. Mm. And the thing I'm thinking to myself is like, this is the Bible. This is what happens. This is demonic. This woman is getting deliverance right now, you know? And as she was sitting there seizing, it went on for quite a few well, I'll say a few minutes. It seemed like, I'm not sure exactly how long it yeah. went on, but I looked at him and I was like, you want me to call 911? I mean, I was worried. I was like, yeah. oh, she's still seasoned. You know, is she going to be okay? And he acted like nothing. He acted like she's fine. He went on and he was preaching and talking and all this. And I'm yep. like, she's over here having this seizure. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> you know? Just he pray looked for at her. Me and he says, 
He says, God is at work with her. She's fine. She's going to be fine. And I was like, okay, all right. So after it was all over with, do you know, she never had a seizure again. And that's been years ago now. Amen. Praise God. You know, God God does heal, you know, and it's just unbelievable. It really is. It's unbelievable. You know, Yeah. just trying to, trying to, trying to share the truth with people let them know the truth. I mean, I'm just, that's all I'm doing all the time. I'm trying to think of ways, you know, to, to share the truth with people is, you know, even when you see them out, I'm trying to think of a way, you know, um, and the church that I was going to before my, my dad started going to another church. So I just kind of went with him, you know, Mm -hmm. because you know, he's always went to the church I wanted to go to all my life. So now he wanted to go to this other church. It was a man preacher and, you know, it was just the way he preached his style and everything. So I went on with him. Well, anyway, we was at the other church. I even started preaching. I was preaching there and stuff. So that was really an honor, you know, but um, that was really neat. And um, besides doing my deliverance ministry, you know, online and stuff. Fantastic. And people don't think it can be done, you know, long distance, but you know, it can. Oh, it yeah. It certainly can. It's yeah. biblical you know yeah. it sure is and it's supernatural like uh yeah. whether you're here or there or it, yeah you know? yes that's yeah. right that's right and you know people say well only jesus did that you know that he didn't mean for us no oh he, he said he, he says, gives us authority that's he it. gives us all the authority you know to do these things that's and right. he said all those that believe cast out demons preach the gospel and heal the sick you know, so that's what we are commissioned to do. And that's what I'm going to do, you know? Yeah. So, you know, praise God, you know, I, I went and I advocated for the devil all those years. And now I want to advocate for the Lord. You know, that's my heart. That's my, praise that's God, my Dana. desire. You know, that's what I want to do. And, um, I'm always looking for ways to do that. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and I think looking back, perhaps um, for for me, I've always wanted to do things for the Lord, which is why I wanted to do Reiki. I wanted to heal people, but in my, in my mind being so um, naive and not knowing anything, I was fooled into thinking that, that, that hands on healing that's, that's in opposition to God's healing yeah. It's the opposite, yeah. and we're we're using a a different spirit here. It's not the Holy yes. Spirit; it's a different spirit. And so, yes. I had to learn the hard way too. Yeah. Um, however, it's kind of like a counterfeit, isn't it? Oh, when you yes. think about it, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. You know, I wanted to ask you. Now, I know you did the Reiki mm-hmm. and stuff. Now, I never did Reiki, but I had it done on me. Mm-hmm. And one time, this lady did it, and. Uh, do you know every sense, every sense she was doing it on my back mm. and, um, every sense that I have this pain, <laughs> you know, it's better now, but for the longest time, it, every since she did it, yeah. I had this awful pain around my side, up, you know, going to like under my armpit yeah. Yeah. and so painful. I'm like, what is it? And I'm, and I always remember it was every since I let her do that to me. Yeah. And you know, so you hear about um, transference, you know? Yeah. Right. Yes. So I believe that um, there is transference where if we put our hands on somebody and, and we are housing a, a demonic spirit that, that can transfer. And they're, and they're submitting themselves to it and allowing right. it, inviting it. But not only know, that, so. you by going to her, ha- is an open yes. invitation you can practice on me and she's doing the symbols over you wow those, those symbols are opening wow. their invitations for a channel of energy to come through and the spirit to come through so just oh, by wow. going to a reiki uh session you're actually opening yourself up for that but people don't know this but hopefully they yeah. Who now listening to the conversation? Um, yeah, yeah. So, so perhaps that's actually what happened. Now, what happened to me? I went to, um, and this was just last year. Sometimes I go and get a, a little 
there's a little Chinese place and you just have, you sit down and they do a massage on your shoulders for, and I get 10 yeah. minutes. And yeah. I, I was doing that and I felt something happened. I felt dizzy all of a sudden, like whoosh. And I felt uh -oh. something either trying to get in me. And immediately when I felt that, I, I kind of froze and I think I threw my hands up like this and she went like this. And I, I just, in my mind, I said, I rebuke you, leave. I rebuke you, leave. You knew it. That's right. You recognized yeah. it. That's and good you I did. don't know if she was doing it on purpose or whether she didn't. She was operating in another spirit. Right. Probably. And I you never know. went back to that place. Mm. And I, I, that's I had good. To pray and pray for God to remove that from me. Um, yes, but yes. I'll never forget that feeling. Now, if I didn't know what I know, I would yeah, have just thought, yeah. oh, what was that? You know, I felt dizzy and I felt, yeah. no, what was that? You know, I wouldn't have known. Yeah, that's um, right. That's right. And wow. That, that was just a simple massage, and you have to be yeah. so careful. I mean, that's why we need to had, put on the armor of God every day. So we have armor between us to protect yeah. us from that kind of stuff. And then hopefully God's discernment will say, no, don't go there. Don't go there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, I wonder, have you had any kind of um, things happen to you? Okay. Well, I'll just tell you what happened. Okay. Because it was very odd. It was after my deliverance, and it was actually a couple of years after. But I, I, I kept dreaming of things. I had a dream that, well, one night I had a dream that I was out in the yard, like it was, it was like I don't know if it was like it was just the whole yard was overgrown, you know, with tall like wheat. It looked like weeds okay. or something, right. but it looked like wheat. And I was out there, and I had one of those uh, sling blades. What do they call those? Like is a, it sickle? Called a, a sickle? sling blade. Mm -hmm. And I dreamed that I was doing that, and I kept doing it, and I was working all the way, like, from the outer part of the yard and going in or, you know, coming in, and all the way up to the back door. And I got and right as I got up to the back door, I looked down, and all of a sudden, I realized it was snakes. Oh. And I was like, but I wasn't afraid. Mm. You know, and then I went into the back. I was sweeping and I got rid of all of it. And I went into the back door and there, everything was clean. But but then what was what was bad, I had another dream. And the next dream I had, I see, I went and I seen one of my team members that used to be on my ghost hunting team. Now, this member in particular, she was just totally obsessed with using the dows and rods. She always wanted to do the thousand rods. And I used to get like, I felt uncomfortable with it. And she'd done it so much. It was like, you know, okay, let's just do something else. You know, this is getting old, you know, but that was when I was into it. But, but anyway, I seen her in my dream and I went up to her and I said, I found out, I was so excited. I said, I finally found out what to do and how to get rid of these things. I said, all you have to do is say in the name of Jesus, and I couldn't say it. And finally, I could, I said it, you know, because I was like, in the name of Jesus, you know, whatever that was, I want to get rid of it, you know. Yeah. It was just like something was putting something in my, I, it wasn't, I didn't see it. Mm. But I, it's like I knew, I knew that Usually, they were putting something in my mind. Yeah. So I couldn't say the name of Jesus. It was weird, you and know. It, it sounds like. Um, and just something that occurred to me, and I don't want to do the whole dream interpretation thing because that, that's, right, right. that's taking us down there, that path. But um, yeah. you, you mentioned that uh, they turned into snakes and, you know, as we know, Satan yeah. can be rep uh, represented as a serpent or a snake. And it was right next to your door. And when you hopped inside, you were safe. And it, well, sometimes, yeah. um, you know, dreams can help us to understand what's happening. It could be that, you know, um, yeah. the temptation or, or the enemy was at your door and just to yeah. protect yourself and be very careful. And, you yeah. know, and then you had those other dreams. So sometimes the enemy right after, tries, right after. tries to interfere in our life. So 
Um, yes. We just need to step up and, and, you know, make sure we do the full armor of God and pray and, and repent for something. If we haven't um, repented, you know, sometimes yes. we yep. up or we do something we, we, we haven't thought about and we think, Oh, okay. Oh, I forgot. Yep. I need to repent for that. Um, because that's if right, that door's right. open anywhere, that's a chance for them to get in. And yes, you're it's right. like we're you're always right in that. battle. We've always got the, the battle yeah. on. And well, you know, I don't know if you know, well, I've done videos. Okay. This is what I kind of thought might've happened. I was doing videos. I'm stuck. I'm not, like I said, I'm always so eager to share the truth with people you know, about these things. Yes. And um, so what I was doing was <laughs> I was trying to show the error in some of these, because I, like I said, the TV is flooded with these ghost hunting shows. Yes. And I was trying to show the truth about, you know, these things. So what I would do, I would get on my, on the, uh, well, I have my, my, my cable app on my phone so I could watch it on my phone. But I would literally sit there and I would watch the videos, you know, on TV, you know, on the TV. Mm -hmm. And um, I would like take clips of it and I would put it on my videos and I would show, look, this guy saying blah, blah, blah. This can't be true, you know. So I was like trying to use the video clips to, to, to bring to light the light, the error in it and stuff. Yeah. So I kind of got to thinking that maybe what it was, was it was me watching the shows. I wasn't doing it as I enjoyment at all. Uh, mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I just, you know, I, I really didn't feel comfortable with it truthfully, yeah. but I kind of, I didn't realize so much then I kept thinking I was using it to help people and stuff. Well, then there was a video that I did and it was about children in the paranormal and what I did was there was a video and um, it was actually a, a lady. It was like a testimonial, actually. This wasn't like a ghost hunting show. But anyway, there was a lot of stuff that happened with these kids. Oh, man, it was terrible. I mean, they were getting marks all over them. Uh, the lady, the kids were saying bad words and stuff. And they're like, where are you getting this from? You know, these kids didn't have like tablets and stuff where they could have got it from and the parents didn't cuss or the mother did and so she set recorders up because the girl the kids were saying there was somebody coming in their room and like saying stuff to them and they were like she's like what and they locking the doors it was they didn't see any evidence of somebody coming in okay so what she did was she put recorders around she was trying to catch it well she heard the record on the recorders these voices and they were like saying nasty things to the kids and it was horrible. It was real though. Cause she, I mean, they had the recordings and everything. So anyway, I watched that video like oh, maybe five times. Mm. And that was because I kept trying to grab things out of it to put on my video to show. Well, at this time, my grandson, he was sleeping with me and it would, it, I forget why. I think maybe my, that was when my niece was living here and, uh, we needed the room, you know, he didn't have the room, you know, room for another bed in there and she was a girl and all. So he was sleeping in my room and all of a sudden he got a mark on him and it literally looked like the word help. And I took a picture of it and I sent it to Mark, Mark Hunman. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was like, look at this, you know, I'm, and I told him that I had been watching the video of these kids getting these marks on them. And these things happening to them. And I believe that it actually opened the door and it, it you know, is doing, did this to my grandson, you know? Wow. So it just kind of showed me that, yeah, you know, watching them shows even for the good is not good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. God doesn't tell us. It's almost like having something cursed in your home. He doesn't say, don't have cursed things in your home, except if you're going to use it for the good. <laughs> You know, right. it's just, we shouldn't do it, period. Yeah. So I think that what happened was, that, that's why that happened to me. I really do. Mm -hmm. Because that was about the time, you know, that that happened to me. You know, with the whole thing with my head and all this stuff. Yes. I just yes. really believe that that's, yeah. that's what was going on. Well, people you know? send me um, paranormal pictures and, and, and video uh, things. Yeah, and I don't like it. I 
quite actually almost all the time I just refuse to watch them because yep. the discernment in me just says no you can't watch that and I don't want yes. to see it Amen. Thought, if if they're telling me it's it's of something that's demonic and I've captured this on film or photograph yeah. I I believe them I don't I don't need to see right it. amen yeah amen especially if you're a deliverance minister you get I I've had so many people send me stuff, you know, well, look at this. I think, the, I think I've got orbs in my room and all this stuff. And I'm like, I, I won't watch it. I don't need it. You don't need, and I tell them, you don't need mm -hmm. to watch it. That alone is an invitation, you know, because our eyes and our ears and all that is, is the gateway, you know. Yes. Lots of shows now that have uh, names of demons and people don't even know it. There's one called wow l-o-c-i loki and it's a demon it's oh. the name of a demon and people don't know this wow um, i didn't know that yeah you know and wow i can't think of um there's probably a ton of other shows i just can't think off the top of my head but um particularly the teenagers and they're all into that dark stuff and it's it's a it's a, a series that they watch it's kind of yes you know it's well, look just at like lucifer that one show right, lucifer right I can't, it's I'm like, like how do they do that i mean they think it's they think it's funny we shouldn't they be watching realize that. he is out to he is out to take them to hell i mean it's it's not a joke i just i don't get it <laughs> i don't get it yeah oh. Well, Dana, I think it's um, your story is just amazing. And I see you've got all little stories throughout your whole testimony. And thank God, yeah. finally, you saw the red flags and you came to Jesus. And I just think Jesus is just so amazing in his transformation of people. He's done it to you. He's done yes, it to he me is. and many others. And, um, you know, I just love giving Jesus all the glory and I also think, you know, this is the time for us to tell people if you're listening to the show and you've been doing things like this, you know, Jesus wants to come to you. He wants, you know, we have free will, but the choice is yours. But Dana yes. and I made yeah. that choice to come to him. And I cannot yeah. tell you how much my life has changed for the better. It's been incredible. And I feel jesus covering his spiritual anointing over my life and my family dana you too amen amen uh, yes amen he sure has and i believe that through everything that i went through he was always there yes. he was always there trying to show me the truth i believe that all these little red flags and things like that was actually him trying to show me the truth yes you know um because who else was it? Was it? It wasn't the devil, you know. He's, it was him. Mm, <clears throat> I really believe that. And, uh, he's always present, but he's just waiting for us. Yeah. To come yeah, to him and right. just to say, Jesus, yes. show me you're real, Jesus. I need you. I need you. And then he comes. That's right. And, and you know, when I first got converted, when I really was converted back, and I, I just, I. You can also get very, you can kind of become so radical mm. that you can also get legalistic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like the devil's always trying, you know? And uh, he, like you said, he even comes, he comes in through, you know, the church too. Right. And I, for a while, got, got like that. But, mm. you know, my brother sat me down, you know, we talked. And he was telling me, you know, he says, you know, it's not what we do, you know, it's not of our works. It's, it's what he's done for us. And, you know, when he saves us, I mean, it was just, he, 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 he broke down the gospel right to me. And when he did, I mean, <laughs> even after everything I had been through, I just broke down because I really felt the, the, the grace I yeah. felt the grace and and the mercy the mercy you yeah. know that God really does it's free it's a free gift yeah well thank you thank you for thank joining you. us this has been two wonderful shows full of uh, 
things to think about and experience yes. that you went through that I went through and and look at us now yes. you know um, we're on the right team and uh, yes. amen warriors for God um, praise yes. Jesus uh, amazing it's so, about saving souls it's it, about it, saving it souls. is um, so bless you Dana you God know just you. like the Bible says just like the Bible says when one person gets saved all of heaven rejoices yeah you know and that's a big thing the angels it's sing. a big thing yeah eternal life it's a big thing yeah. that's right it's worth it amen god, god bless you dana thanks amen. for coming on we'll see thank you back you. In the next god bless show. you too Lee. god thank bless. you